Hello, and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I'm available for contracting, on-site training, and code reviews. In this episode, I would like to discuss the possibility that actually using and passing structs could lead to more efficient code. And for this example, I have two different versions of this useVels call. I have one that takes four uint 8 ts and I have one that takes a single struct called ints, and the single struct called ints is four uint 8 ts Now, in this particular example, I am building on a 64-bit Intel architecture. And you can see here in the first version of call ints, which I have down here on line 17, that it has to pass each value one at a time into a register. And you can use this to kind of see what registers are used in what order to pass values to function calls on the 64-bit Intel ABI. So we can see that the first value is going into EDI, the second value is going into ESI, the third value into EDX, and the fourth into ECX. And we can continue to add values to this. So I'm just going to add one more for the sake of this example. And you can see that our 8 D here is used for the fifth value. Now compare this to the version that takes a single struct of four ints. And in this particular case, the compiler was able to flatten this struct into a single register that takes 32 bits. So this is one move and one thing being passed to the function call. Now if we were to extend this to more values and we will add one value at a time here. We can now see that our 9D is being used here. And continuing along, now that we have seven values that we are passing, we have exhausted the registers that the 64-bit Intel ABI is willing to use for passing parameters to a function call. So for the seventh one, this actually has to be pushed onto the stack, which is what's happening on line three of our disassembly here. And to make it rounded out and fair, we will go ahead and add a final eighth parameter. And now we will see that we have had to push the values seven and eight onto the stack, and we have had to save the register RAX, and we have then had to do some restoration of the stack down here on lines 12 and 13, and we have to use a version of call that does something that deals with return values, because we have to come back to here to clean up the stack. Now compare this to our version down here, which we are still passing one struct to, but we can go ahead and pass a second struct to it like this. and. The actual implementation of these functions don't matter at the moment, but we can see here that we are getting EDI and ESI because each of these can hold 32-bit values and the struct itself is 32 bits. So it is perfectly happy to push all of this into one register for passing to our function call. Now you may be wondering what happens if we actually make a struct that takes eight values and we can try that out. So in both of these examples, we are passing 64 bits of data to our function call, but we have done it in one way where it is forced to pass it as eight different parameters and in another way as it can pass it as exactly one parameter because it fits into 64 bits and it is in a single struct. So we are getting this move of the 64-bit value into RDI and we're calling this and we get this much more efficient call that is able to do a jump instruction instead of a call instruction. Now, this doesn't say anything about what happens when we actually want to work with those values on the other side. So we could break this out a little bit and just say, for example, that we want to return the sum of all of these values. 
and you know there'll probably be overflow or something like this but we can do it like this this is terribly named because I now have a variable that is the same name as a type but it's going to work for this sake of this code and we can see here that this function is now existing in our disassembly and to access these values it's actually having to shift things shift and then continue on with what it wanted to do but our call via structs code here just becomes a return and now this is a problem because it actually has a definition for this function and if it has a definition for it it is almost certainly going to inline it in either case so there is probably some sort of a trade-off to be made here between whether or not you want super efficient calling of the function or super efficient accessing of the values or if it is all going to be inlined anyhow because it's a definition that you have available locally and it is important to note that all of this only applies to the 64 bit Intel ABI. Let's go ahead and put this back how it was and let's try to do this with a ARM compiler. And on the Compiler Explorer right now the latest version of ARM GCC that we have available is 7.2.1 and we can see that we've got the values 5, 6, 7, and 8 are moved into a register then those variables are copied onto the stack all at once and then it puts the next variables in and then it is calls the value and it has to do this branch with the save of the return and then it restores the stack again similarly to what it had to do on the Intel architecture now looking at the version that is a single struct we really don't seem to get anything that is much better it is having to save values onto the stack and then it's having to call the function and having to come back and having to restore the stack again so again this is a specific optimization that is available with the intel architecture so while this may or may not give you better performance using structs to pack your data together, if it's the correct thing to do, if these values are always being passed around together, this is yet another case where using the correct abstraction can actually lead to better code performance in the long run and more maintainable code. So be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and click on any of the links here.